I'm going to start a new project today and it's a lot bigger than it might seem at first so the project is to paint the floor with an epoxy paint it's gonna look great I hope but before I can do that I've got to get everything off the floor like all my tools all my wood stacks uh, benches everything got to go out and then I'm going to power hose the concrete to get it clean as uh, there's probably some things that I can't move that will need protecting from the water like magazines for example maybe some drop sheets or something over them will save them Some of these things I can just wheel out round the back into the courtyard which is covered so they can stay out there for a couple of days in the rain. And try not to let the toolbox run down the hill on the driveway. Solid tip. Get away from you down the hill on the driveway isn't as easy as it sounds either unfortunately that one won't fit unless I take the gate off its hinges do stuff just means we gotta pay the piper later a cup of tea always helps wet but it's okay I'll get some fans in here tonight to keep air circulating so it dries up quicker uh, but now I'm just gonna flood it out and then get the power hose to actually get the grime out of the concrete itself so a bit of a flood first
been two days now since we painted the floor um, so technically it's supposed to be 100% right for walking on uh, normal foot traffic and it certainly feels like that it's good I kept this this is the leftovers we had that's the roller is absolutely well and truly stuck in there and this feels kind of like thick rubber it's not wet at all it's like thick rubber I can't press my thumb right into it it's not so it's not a skin on top it feels like it's rubbery the whole way through so I'm going to keep this uh, roller thing for several more days at least or a week or more to see how that hardens up but on the floor where it's thin it's certainly hard and dry and no issues walking on it. Uh, I can scooch my feet on it, no problem. Most of the sprinkles seem to be sticking. There's several, several that are loose, but several that are not loose, stuck. So I'll give this a vacuum tomorrow or the next day, get it rid of the loose ones. Today I'm going to take up the masking tape. So if I only had one tip I think, one minor tip would be if at all possible, take the tape off as you go. Don't leave it till it hardens because only, and this is only a minor issue, a couple of spots where the paint was attached to the floor and to the tape and went hard, the tape would rip and it was a little bit difficult to get it off without damaging the paint on the floor at the same time. Uh, but otherwise, oh, the other, and the other major tip I guess I would have looking at it now is I probably would have, well I would if I was doing this again, I definitely would uh, do a self-leveling self -leveling screed on the concrete before I put down this final surface. Um, it's not a big issue, it is a garage, it is a working shed, so puck marks and cracks and flaws in the floor are to be expected in those kind of garages. On the opposite side of that coin however though is if it was smooth and flat and shiny it may well be slippery. All in all I am very happy with the time and the effort and the money spent on this floor. I'm looking forward to getting my uh, tools and benches back in here and especially looking forward to seeing if it really does actually make a difference that a nice shiny floor will be easier to clean. So aside from looking good the practical aspects of it are important. The practical aspects are it shouldn't be slippy and that it should be easier to clean. That was my extra break. And thanks to Gardner from across the road. Also another practical benefit is this floor will reflect light around the shop which will be great for videos. That's important. Looking good, I'm happy. And Rosie's happy. And that's the most important thing. That's the one key piece of advice. Make your missus happy. <laughs>